Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. How can we ensure code quality in our .NET projects? That's a, actually a very important question to ask always when you're about to start a new project. And in this video, I'm about to show you some tools and some very useful tricks that we can use in our projects to ensure that we write quality code, especially if we work in larger teams. But before we can dive into the practical part, there are some very important key concepts that we need to understand. First of all, we need to define what exactly code quality means. And here the challenge is that if you look online for blogs or even if you ask ChatGPT, you will get a lot of different answers to what code quality actually means. And here you have just a few examples that I have put together based on what I have found online. However, one thing that we can see if we look at these specific points here is that not all of them are actually dependent on us directly as developers, especially if we work for customers that already have established teams and processes. For instance, if you want to have, I don't know, certain coding standards, you might need to follow the coding standards of that specific team. And also, if we think about this automation testing, maybe some clients or some teams don't want to invest in automated testing. And in fact, I have worked with such customers. Obviously, as developers, there's not much that we can do in cases like that. So what I would like to do instead, I would like us to focus on the things that we can directly influence as developers without needing any type of sign off and approval from anybody else. So thinking a little bit deeper into what can we do directly as developers, I have pinpointed these five points that are, from my point of view, very important for code quality. First of all, we want obviously to avoid vulnerabilities and security issues, but we also want to avoid bugs. Also, we would like to write code that's maintainable, that's testable, and that's easy to read. And last but not least, we want to adhere to agreed coding standards. And that's a very important topic. Before you kick off any project with a team, you need to define exactly, okay, what coding standards do we want to follow in this specific project? And once this is agreed, we need a way to enforce it. And we'll see just in a few minutes how we can do that. Now the question is, can we maybe use some different tools or techniques in order to ensure that we write quality code and, and that we don't rely only on code reviews because code reviews, they are performed by humans. We might miss things. So is there any way to automatically test things like that? And the answer is obviously yes. And this tool that we can use is called static code analysis. Now, static code analysis is a way or a technique to actually analyze code without executing it. So basically, while we write the code, there is some tool or there are some tools that already check our code. Usually how static code analysis works is that there are some rule sets defined for what exactly should be checked during this automatic code analysis process. And this can enable us to actually have access to code metrics and to understand if, if our code is a quality code and or if our code is not that quality. And it also helps us to identify issues and we can easily integrate this with our development workflow. Now, the main problem here with static code analysis is that people usually think that in order to perform this, you need some tools like, for instance, SonarCube, which are obviously paid tools. And in larger teams where also the customers are willing to pay for this, that's actually a very important point because you can add Sonar Cube, for instance, for static code analysis as part of your CCI CD pipeline, which means that, for instance, if your static code analysis fails, then you won't be able to actually deploy and you would be able to see all these things while you actually try to complete a pull request. So that's kind of very, very important. But then the problem is, how can we in the .NET ecosystem make sure that we can leverage actually static code analysis directly maybe in our IDE without the need to actually use these type of third party tools that are actually paid tools? Fortunately, in .NET, we are blessed with what we call the Roslyn compiler platform. Now, Roslyn is something very, very nice because it comes with a bunch of compilers that compiles our .NET code so that we can run it. However, the Roslyn compiler is actually more than that because it also surfaces some public APIs that allow you, for instance, if you would like to, to write your own tool that would real time or that, that will be able to check the code that you are writing and make suggestions for you on how you could improve that. And this is uh, usually what we call Roslyn Analyzer. And in fact, 
when we start or fire up a new .NET project, depending also the platform that we are targeting, for instance, if it is an ASP.NET Core application or if it is a MAUI application, you would already have built in some Roslyn analyzers that would help you with your code quality. Now, the thing is that due to the fact that Roslyn, Roslyn exposes this set of public APIs, it means that also third-party providers have started to write their own analyzers. And here I want to come back to this Sonar because Sonar is probably the most popular and the most powerful tool for static code analysis, not only for .NET and c but also for other languages and frameworks. Now, the cool thing is that also Sonar has developed a NuGet package in which they basically provide you a Sonar analyzer that would be able to perform static code analysis on your code while you write it. But enough talking, let's also get into the more practical part of it. So here I have in Visual Studio, because most of you will be probably using Visual Studio, I have just a bunch of few projects. And what I want to show you first is that if you go, for instance, in this weather forecast, and in these dependencies, you will see that you have here these analyzers. And in fact, you see here, these are all the analyzers that come in with a default ASP.NET Core project. Now these analyzers, while you are writing code, they analyze it and give you feedback about how the quality of your code actually looks like. And the way it is giving feedback is through these errors and warnings that you see here. And for instance, I have here this convert file scope namespace. And if I go to this, I see that I have defined this namespace as a block scope namespace. Now that would be a problem, for instance, if you think in a team, this option to prefer file scope namespaces instead of block scope namespaces might be set up differently on each developer's machine. So what you would end up having is that you would have a total inconsistency based on the developer that is writing a certain code. Now, first of all, I would like to show you where you can define in Visual Studio this type of rules. And if you go here on tools and on options and here under text editor and C sharp and code style, you see this entire list. And here you can tweak around different things and set up your preferences. And if you want for, uh, for, for those preferences to show up just as refactoring tips or as warnings or as errors or suggestions, so you can do everything just here. Now, the problem is that if you do these things just here, that basically applies for your Visual Studio instance. But other developers might have set up it differently. And this would actually cause a lot of inconsistency in the code, which ultimately will affect the code quality of your project. Now, the first very important step and tool to actually make sure that you adhere to cer certain standards and all developers in the team follow the exact same rule, we can't rely on that. So what we can do instead, we see here that we have this generate editor config. Now, editor config files are very powerful and are not only specific for Visual Studio, they are specific for literally all IDEs. And editor config is very important because here, for instance, to make it quicker, I just have exported all these settings that I have set up here via an editor config. And now what I can do here is simply come to the solution, right click it and add here an existing item. And in this existing item, I would choose this editor config file and I will add it to the solution as a solution item. Now, the thing is that this file needs to be committed to source control. And what it actually does is that in that case, no matter who, who from your team actually checks out the, the code and starts to write something, all the settings that you define here are actually applied. Now, Visual Studio also has this very nice tool that kind of like has also visual representation of what we have in that editor config file. But in order to make it clearer for you and, uh, and to see exactly how this editor config file looks like, I will open this here and I will click right click here and I will open this with Visual Studio code. And this is the editor config file and how it looks like under the hood. And basically you can come here and tweak around with everything with all these specific features. Now, if you take a look here, there are a lot of things here that are configurations for the ID and the way that we want to write code that a lot of times cause us a lot of headaches when we work in teams. For instance, if we want to use tabs or spaces. So these are really, really very important. Here you see that there are a lot of different things that are defined and that you can actually tweak around. Okay, so now we are a step further in our journey or quest to make sure that we write quality code on our projects when we work in teams. Now, the next thing is that the default Roslyn analyzers that you have and all the possible settings that you might have don't actually maybe cover everything. And for instance, if you just rely on the Roslyn analyzers, 
And then for instance, on the project, you have also SonarCube that runs static code analysis during the CI/CD pipeline process. Then you might have their errors or warnings that you don't catch here in this IDE. Now, one thing that we can do here is, as said, Sonar have actually created their own NuGet package with an analyzer. So it means that we can go here to the solution, manage the NuGet packages, because I want to have this for really all the projects in the solution. And I will search here for Sonar. And this is the Sonar Analyzer for C Sharp. I will say that I want to install it for all the projects and I just install this NuGet package. Now let's do a rebuild of the solution. Now if we come back to our errors and, uh, and warnings, you will see that we have some warnings that we didn't actually have before. And that's because the Sonar Analyzers has some rule sets that are not present in the Roslyn Analyzers that are by default in this project. And for instance, some of them might be very, very important. For instance, use only strong cipher algorithms verifying the signature of a JWT. And if we go here, we see that actually the problem is here and it's underlined and we didn't get this problem before. And actually this is a security issue that's actually fairly, fairly high. Now to solve this issue in this case is very easy because the only thing that we would need to do is to always verify the signature of a JSON web token. But you saw that the regular analyzers didn't actually get that before, but the Sonar analyzer did get this type of issue, which is once again a security vulnerability, so it's a very important one. The next thing to take care of is that all the Sonar or all the warnings that we have or errors from the Sonar analyzers, you see that they are prefixed by the S letter. So this is, this is how you know that this act warning actually comes from the Sonar analyzer and not from anything else. I will go back here to false because I want to have still all this type of warning. Cool. And now we can actually move on to the next and last topic to ensure code quality on our projects. Now, the problem is that most of the times you will get a lot of warnings through this process of static code analysis and warnings are useful. But the problem is that a lot of times developers just ignore them. So we need also a way to enforce that all the warnings that we have here, they should be treated as errors so that the developer fixes it and that we don't push to production, for instance, code that has bugs like this one here. And to do this, we can simply come here to the CS profile of the project. And here we need to add an entry in which we say that we want to treat warnings as errors. So we just set this property to true. And this theoretically should transform all our warnings in errors. Obviously, we need to do this for all the other projects that we have here, because otherwise some of the warnings will still remain warnings. So we did it in this project and let's also apply it in this project. And now if I do a rebuild, we see that all the warnings that we previously had are actually errors. And right now we cannot compile the project. So in this case, or by doing this, we will always enforce that developers should actually solve all the problems and all the warnings in the code before they are able to actually build the application and are able to submit a pull request. And that's very important because as we have seen, some of the problems that we have here are actually very, very sensitive and they might introduce security vulnerabilities in our applications. And this is something that we totally don't want to have. So as a conclusion to this video, there are a few key points that we can use to ensure code quality on our .NET projects. First of all, we need to make sure that our project team is using an editor config file so that we all stick to the same principles and to the same rule sets that we agree upon and that are well defined. Then we can also use third party analyzers for static code analysis that will in real time show us where we might have issues in our code and uh, probably the most popular such analyzer that you can use in your projects is the sonar analyzer c sharp last but not least to ensure that developers not just overlook the warnings because sometimes warnings might introduce real vulnerabilities in our applications we need to make sure that on all our projects in our solution, we have to enforce these treat warnings at errors. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel if you didn't do this already. And if you have any question or just want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave your comment and I will be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.